Now, some people would say, if I got up, if I raised my voice a little bit, if I got upset, and obviously I showed emotion. Um, now, I'm sure some people would conclude, oh, he's an angry black man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm very positive, I'm sure. All right. Now, if I really, if I had said some other stuff, they showed him and said I was an angry black man. But now, with what Owen said, and he's very passionate, and I, and, and I actually respect his passion and his energy. Mm-hmm. So with him saying it, oh, he's just very passionate about what he says. But a black person said, oh, they're angry. All things theology, all things theology. We chop it up properly without an apology. Gotta give doxology to God hollow because this is how we do it at All Things Theology. Um, if, if you're watching this video, I want to take the time to tell you, make sure to like this video. Uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed to the channel. And stay involved with the work that I'm doing here. Uh, so the debate between you and Owen was essentially over the issue of woke uh, and why don't why don't you tell me uh, what you think it means what you believe it means to be woke well uh, brother you don't have to tell me because it, <laughs> <laughs> as we talked about an email I don't see any theological I, I, to me it's an ideology and it's an ideology that's really been around for quite a while i think it was formulated in 1989 but this is the thing it's something that's only taught in law schools is is not anything that's that's been taught in not, public not schools. not critical race theory but i'm, I'm saying woke because I, I don't i don't i try not to equate uh critical race theory with uh mm-hmm. woke but I, although i think there are some overlap but i i want to be resp- i want you to f- allow you to define your own terms that's what i'm saying okay. right and, now and see for me and, and i think i that's why i shared you an email you have to find it for me because okay. i always from what i've heard from uh about woke the woke pastor the woke church is yeah. this is a pastor who's embraced critical race theory and, and let me be real the reason i'm really not i'm really not well versed in it is because I passed in black church. This is really not an issue for us. It's not an issue for, at all for us, mm-hmm. I should say. And I'm, when I say us, I mean the black church. Right. I mean, uh, you know, I, whatever woke means. I mean, we've always been woke. We 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 don't have the luxury of not being woke. Okay, <laughs> so so okay. So this whole wokeness, this wokeness stuff. I don't. I, yeah, I don't have any frame of reference for it because it's not something. And my book is not even about it, and that's what I think. I, fair fair and enough. Which is, yeah, my book fair is enough. not even about that at so, all. I mean, depending on what it is. So let's uh, let's. So you have to tell me. Okay, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> generally, what I hear, you know what? I let's. I'll bring up one of the quotes you said, and we could talk about that rather than sure. things you didn't write about or aren't passionate about. That's fair. Um, at the forty-nine minute mark, twenty seconds, you say this. Racism is America's original sin. And you say original sin is a condition that never ends, according to Augustine. And Mm -hmm. I've read quite a bit of Augustine and I'm not familiar of any place that he argues that original sin is um, uh, never ending. Um, I would disagree with some of his uh, articulations, but but nevertheless, I want to get to this point Um, because it seems if I take your words to its logical conclusion, mm-hmm. you're saying that racism never ends. Because uh, let me let me quote it again, okay? Mm-hmm. Racism is America's original sin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you quote Augustine, um, it's a sin, it's a condi- sorry, it's a condition that condition. never ends. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I think it's obvious to say racism is America's uh, is is a state of condition that never ends in America. I, I think would you agree with that? I agree with that. Okay. And, 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 and for me, see, Owen, and, and like I said to you before, there was a whole lot I should have said and could have said, didn't, didn't say, cause I was really trying to keep my cool. I think, yeah. um, um, when I say that I'm talking about systemic racism, structural racism that, that has, unfortunately is the consequence of that original the original racism in america he was focused on individual racism 
and there are individuals who are racist but but when i talk about um uh, racism being america's original sin i'm speaking more of systematic racism that this is this is something that is unfortunately ingrained in 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 our political systems in our social systems in our legal systems even even in our religious system some of them that you know that's what i mean okay. systemic racism structural racism that's what i mean okay so i'm i'm not even even though i do believe and i said this also i don't mm -hmm. know if you caught this or not i said unfortunately from what from at least from my link from what i can tell from history it has been a generational curse yes yes i have that quote and, here and, um, and, and 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 when i say that and i meant exactly what i mean mm -hmm. but the thing about a generational curse is a generational curse can end with somebody yeah, let me let me quote that. You say <laughs> racism, it is a general curse. The sins of past white generations is the foundation for the sins, the racist sins of present white generations. Mm -hmm. it, but that but, but this is the issue if you know, you claim that it it is a uh, it can end, which I do want to respect, but I'm having trouble uh with what you just said a minute ago about this being a condition that never ends. Can you reconcile those yeah. two statements for me? Sure. Sure, sure, sure. But again, I'm not, and I'm. I lost you some kind of way here. Oh, I don't know how. Can you still hear me I, though? Can you see me? I can hear you. Can yeah, you see me? I can see you. You, you're, you're great on my oh, wow. end. <laughs> Sorry I don't about know that. How I lost you. <laughs> but I can definitely hear you. Okay, I can't good. see you though for some reason. I don't know why. What is going on here? Uh, oh, there you are. Okay. Yeah. I just felt kind of odd. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> uh, but again, for, again. I'm speaking more of systematic structural racism, a race uh, is because for me, racism is a demonic spirit. That's the other disagreement that I think Owen and I certainly have. I think he would agree with that. It's, it's demonic. I mean, in one sense, all well, sin is, but see, for me is, is not when I say demonic, that's something that's beyond just telling a lie. Okay. Now, now of course somebody can have, can be demonically possessed and be a compulsive liar, a habitual liar, you know, <laughs> but, but I, I guess what I'm trying to say is for me, there's a difference between, I think all of us, even as Christians, even, even if you're sanctified, I think all of us can be demonically influenced if we're not careful. All of us can yield to temptation, but there's a difference between demonic influence and demonic possession. Okay, so let let me ask yeah. this because uh, you know, on the topic of racism, mm -hmm. um, you believe that uh, racism in in regards to uh, systematic racism is still very prevalent in our country for for mm -hmm. black people. Mm -hmm. uh, matter of fact, you had a quote that was uh, I thought okay, yeah, here it is. Uh, you quote Delgado, which is a critical race theorist. Just for those who mm -hmm. are curious, sure. um, you say racism is the normal experience of the people of color. Um, mm -hmm. So I want to ask you this question. Uh, what is your strongest argument for system for systemic or systematic racism today for people of today? color? Yeah, sure. Thank you. And because and, I didn't articulate this, I think I was so because you know how you was just about to fall out your chair when I made some <laughs> statements before. That's really how I was in in debating. Oh, and there was a lot of stuff I could have said. Sure. I should have said back, but I was just so appalled. What's appalling to me is that this is even a question. Hmm. Oh, well, and, and and let me be clear I'm not suggesting and I don't know where Owen got it from and again I'm not up on this woke stuff and I, I'm just not up on it so maybe he knows something I don't I'm sure he knows stuff I don't know Right. but I've never read anywhere from what I've read from critical race theory uh, uh, wokeness which is probably limited now that, that persons are saying that all white people are white supremacists I, I haven't read that well, now, it's um, probably there somewhere I don't know but but uh, I, I haven't. I would encourage you to read this. Who she okay. she literally yeah, claims look, that I actually have that book. She claims so, that racism so, is the air we breathe, and by yeah. we she means white people. Um, white people. Okay. You know. So anyway, I do have that book, so I need to look into that. But 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 as I said to Owen in our in our dialogue, um, I do believe that there is white privilege, and 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 if you read my book, you would know I'm, white supremacy and white privilege, two different things. But for me, so so 
even even the dialogue we had, and I'm sure you saw some of my facial expressions, and Lord help me. Some some because because of 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 what I'm calling white privilege. Now, some people would say, if I got up, if I raised my voice a little bit, if I got upset, and obviously I showed emotion. Um, now, I'm sure some people would conclude, oh, he's an angry black man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm very positive, I'm sure. All right. Now, if I really, if I had said some other stuff, they showed him and said I was an angry black man. But now, with what Owen said, and he's very passionate, and I and and I actually respect his passion and his energy. Mm-hmm. So when him saying it, oh, he's just very passionate about what he says. But a black person said, oh, they're angry. Now that's not my best example. Let me give my best example. Okay. Because because Owen made a statement, and I was so by, appalled by it, I couldn't even I didn't even know where to begin to respond. To be Un- honest with you. Understandable. So he said, white privilege. It would be a tall order to prove that there's white privilege in America. That's what he said, be taught all of the proof that there's white privilege. So my response to that would be this, should have been this, would be this. If you think that's a tall order, ask George Floyd, ask Ahmaud Aubrey, ask Walter Scott, ask Eric Gardner, ask, I mean, the list just goes on, ask, um, Tony Tempa. Yeah, I mean, you know, all of these black men and women, by the way, who have been killed, whether it was at the hands of, of police brutality, whether it was at the hands of white supremacy, whatever the case may be, ask them. You can't ask them because they're dead. Right. And the reason they're dead is because they were black. That's why they did. Well, hold on, hold now, on, hold on a second. Yeah. You think George Floyd was killed because he was black? Oh, I, I, if brother, if if he had not been black, Derek Chauvin's knee wouldn't have been on his neck with his face to the ground, have, and Derek Chauvin's knee would not have choked the very life out of his body because it never would have been there. If have he you wasn't have black. you have you heard of Tony Temper? No, I haven't. Tony Temper was uh. It's it's ironic if you take Tony Tempa and George Floyd because they're very similar. Um, mm-hmm. Tony Tempa happened in Dallas, and guess what? The reason why you don't know about him is because he's not white. <laughs> Funny enough, the reason why nobody knows about Tony Tempa is because he's white. Mm-hmm. If he'd have been a black man, it'd have gone viral. But Tony Tempa was choked out by the police here in Dallas. Uh, that's where I, I'm in the area. Mm-hmm. And you you say if he was white, it wouldn't happen. Well, we have evidence of many black white people who. I mean, you, literally parallel situations of every black person you bring up. There's a white person with the same thing. And my conclusion is this. It's not a a uh, racism issue from the public. I mean, not on the face of it. I mean, it could be for some. I don't know their hearts. But generally, it's a lack of police training. And this is why I believe police don't need to be defunded, but rather funded. Police need to be actually gone through various well, training situations. That's my opinion. Well, That's my uh, standard. Oh, oh, okay. Well, brother... I mean, you look through our history and, and especially today, and maybe the white cases are not getting the coverage. I mean, I mean I'm not. thankful. <laughs> I'm thankful for the cell phones. I'm thankful because honestly, we I, I, without the cell phones, without the video coverage of this stuff, we we wouldn't know as much as we know now. But for me, yeah, it. it White privilege is this. Let, let me give let me give an example of white privilege. White privilege is how a Dylan Roof could go into a church and kill nine worshipers who who didn't just happen to be black. He was there intentionally. Kill nine worshipers. And when he's finally caught, when he's finally caught, he's offered a happy meal. So, He's off for the so Jermaine, I, I got a very similar situation as well. Again, here in Dallas, where a guy went up in a school and shot four people, and he was arre- he was arrested peacefully, and the next day he's out on bond. And so, well, you talking about this, what happened last week? Yes, yes, I am. Oh, I was praying for that, and I'm so glad <laughs> because I'm gonna tell you something. But he turned himself in with his lawyer, right? 
No, he I... turned himself in. Yeah, he turned. They didn't catch him. He turned himself in. The the, okay. the um black the black who who went and shot the school because they were bullying him. Right. And I'm gonna tell you, Chris. I'm. This is just me. I was thankful to God because I believe. <laughs> Amen. That had they caught had they caught that boy, he'd been dead right now. Yeah. And, and, and I feel or it's because or more people would have been dead. It's because he's black. Dylan Roof, you you he's caught. He's he's asked for a meal. Let me. Let, let me get another example. Kyle Rittenhouse okay. comes from an uh, 18-year-old with an AK, some type of military-style we- weapon, comes from another state, comes from Illinois or Wisconsin, shoots up two or three people, well, pro- uh, two protesters and wounds one, surrenders, surrenders with his gun in his hand. The police completely ignores him, surrenders goes back to his home state, turns himself in, and then there's some type of Christian organization, some type of um, Christian, um, some type of website, like a GoFundMe, it's a Christian base, and they raise a half million dollars, 586 million, um, 586, what is it, half a million dollars for him. My opinion, this is, this is, it's the best example of white privilege I can give. All right. I mean, there's a whole lot of examples, but this is the best one. White privilege is is being treated, no matter what the circumstance is, with some humanity. White privilege is is given the benefit of the doubt, no matter what the situation is. White privilege is most of the time living to see another day. So, I mean, that's just the way I see it, I, because, I, you know, I, maybe I'm not seeing these. Ca- I'm not seeing these cases you're talking about. So, you yeah, know, yeah. But, this, but this, again, I think this actually goes to show how our experiences again, are, how our yeah. experiences are limited and how sometimes we can read into situations. Um, I, and that I, I, I try not to I try to be careful. Um, has there been cases where I thought uh racism might have been might have been a part absolutely i'm not claiming that racism doesn't exist i think you will be a fool to claim that but as someone brings up in the chat blm has raised up literally millions of of dollars on behalf of uh all the rioters and and stuff funded i mean you you literally have black people participate in the street in literal riots and guess what no one gets hurt as far as like the police uh so so like 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 i said every I, i think a lot of this stuff you know, when you bring up, there could be legitimate counter arguments to where say, hey, look, it may not be racist. Look at this over here. You know what I'm saying? Well, when you look at Black Lives Matter, there's just as many white people involved in Black Lives Matter as there are black folk. And it's, I mean, it's very diverse. Yeah, but, and, but, but and, the leaders are and, and, are black. It is. It is. Yeah, a, yeah of you course. Know. But 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 it is it is it is a it is not. They will tell you they are not. A, they're not a religious movement. They're, a Marxist they're not movement. a spiritual movement. Well. That's I'm, that's their claim. They yeah, claim I, they know, claim that. But 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 they're not a religious movement. They're not. They don't want anything to do with anybody's church. And, and so, you know, this whole and I think I said it on the other day. I don't get this this notion that they're hijacking the gospel. They're not making any theological claims. They're not even trying to be connected to theology here, at all. Here here's what uh here's <laughs> what know? um Owen means by that, and many people like me who would say that they have saints. They have martyrs. They do have a gospel message. And that gospel message is this. Uh, no justice, no peace. Um, until you do meet our demands, you, I mean, there is no peace with black people or BLM leaders. There are many parallels that uh, BLM and social justice folks who, who ha- uh, articulate um, BLM's message. I, I'm distinguishing social justice people between those who agree with Black Lives Matter for this discu- this discussion. There are many religious claims that uh, Black Lives Matter do make, and I think and I know uh, we should be wary of them. L- but let me let me ask you this. Let, let, let me. I'm, I'm not wary of them at all. I mean, I'm, I'm I mean, grateful for them. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so are, are you okay? Are because, you okay with because, Marxism? Because this is the reality. Um, this is the reality, Chris. There would not have to be a proclamation that black lives matter if historically you you mentioned earlier and and owen talks about image bearers in his book but my book shows the theological trajectory of how that has that is not 
unfortunately, that is not what American white Christianity, that has not been the message from, from the Puritans, even for some of them to now. So, I mean, you well, know. To be fair, no, no people group can look down their history and see perfection. Um, so if, if that's going to be but, the standard, but brother, that, that's disingenuous. And, and, and Jermaine, I mean, I'm not that, denying that's, racism. That's disingenuous. That's just, I, but it's disingenuous, though. I, you know, I mean, nobody's perfect, obviously, but but we're talking about theologies, theologies. We're talking about you said earlier, people using the name of Christ to justify their racism, to justify their white supremacy. And you have you have black people I, doing that today. I mean, I, I mean. But, but brother, I, I'm talking about a systematic I'm, I'm from 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 the inception of this country. Some some Owen says in his book that's really appalling to me. He says this country wasn't founded on races uh, as a racist society. Yes, it was. No, it definitely was. Your founding document, the U.S. Constitution in the Articles of the Federation states that people of color are three eighths of a person brother if that well, ain't racist three, i don't three know fours, what it is but but here's but the issue I thought, there was, I think it's three eighths. <clears throat> there was a development of of slavery that definitely involved a racist issue but was not necessarily the case i mean um brother it was it was definitely racism i, I, I mean not, it was driven by economics but it's i mean exactly and even so on, there was economic slavery on, and racist slavery i, I distinguished no, you have to be fair same. you have to be fair it's with history same. Because because there is no no other form of slavery in the history of slavery, and I will say, his slavery has been around since the beginning of time, but n there was no other form of slavery in the history of slavery like American race based chattel slavery. What? Like American are, are race based serious? chattel slavery. I, I, I'm very serious. Are, are you familiar with what uh, the Islamic uh, slavery looked like? Um, uh, the Irish being enslaved that, that that's just that's just factually not true historically well, we, we have to disagree on okay. that because okay. I, I mean even on he goes at length to suggest that in his book I mean he talks about the different forms of slavery in the biblical text you know so so I mean so you let, know, let, let me let me move let me let me move to this then so sure because we're talking about racism so mm -hmm. so what's the solution you know how do, how do we how do we get rid of that I think that's the big heart question right sure. how, how do we how do we get rid of it well, I, I'll say this, um, Chris, and I hear your heart. Okay. And and I hear your heart, and you know we on I think two completely weightless theologically. Right. <laughs> two completely different weightless theologically. That's okay though. Um, I'll say this. I don't think suggesting. In fact, I don't. It, it's not even think. It's knowing. I know this. Suggesting that social justice is antithetical to the gospel is not the way okay so what is like a, a, a positive proclamation <laughs> you know I, what i mean, mean that, that now in my book i suggest um what 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 one scholar calls decolonial love all right and 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 i'm a wesleyan and, and so as a wesleyan for me sanctification Is having perfect love of God and perfect love of your neighbor. All right, you don't necessarily like your neighbor, but you have to have perfect love of God. Who could say and that? Perfect love of your neighbor. Who could Who could say they have that? Well, I mean, if you love your neighbor, if you love God with your with 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 your uh, with your what the scriptures say, Heart. love the Lord your God with all your mind, your 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 soul, your you know. You know the text. Right. Love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your mind, with your soul, and your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, um, it can be done. You know, <laughs> I mean, it, you know, perfectly. It can be done. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I don't think I, I mean, us, only Christ does that. Do that. Striving for perfection, though. I mean, Christ even says, "Be ye perfect as I am perfect. Be ye holy as I'm holy." Now, I'm not suggesting anybody's going to be perfect, but we should be striving. Yeah, okay. I mean, I, I mean, Paul talks about that, and and y'all think I hate Paul. Paul talks about that. <laughs> saying, I think I, I did not say. I that. think you just devalue Paul. I think th that's well, what I would. That's what well, I would say. Just that's, that's better than hating. Him. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> I just like the word tolerate. I, okay. That's all, all right. I'm saying. You know. But but I don't hate Paul. But 
I so, just, so like I, I said, I'm suspicious with him. But but he says, even he says, um, not that I've arrived, but I press toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. In other words, I'm striving. And so and so and so for me, when you have love of God and love of neighbor, and, and that and that's the problem. See, the problem with racism is there's only certain people who are my neighbor. I don't consider everybody my neighbor. And and if I don't consider them fully human, I'm certainly not gonna consider I certainly don't consider them my neighbor. Right. Everybody, hey.